Hi. So uh, next we have Ben from Imperial College of London uh, talking about low latency convolution layer computation under home of it encryption. Uh, let me just share the screen. Uh, okay. Then... Hi, I'm Ben. I'm a PhD student in the triple E department at Hi, I'm Ben. I'm a PhD student in the Triple E department at Imperial College London. I'm currently working with Dr. Christos Buganis and Professor Peter Chong. Today, I'm going to give a talk on low latency convolutional layer computation under homomorphic encryption. This is the table of contents. First, I'll talk about the motivation and background. Next, I'm going to talk a little bit about the CKKS homomorphic encryption scheme, followed by the convolutional layer and what operations are required. Finally, I'll present the methodology and results of our work. So for the motivation and background. Our work is motivated by the need for secure or privacy preserving computation in the cloud. Typically, a client will have some data that they want to evaluate a function on, which are both sent to some third party server. The server carries out the computation and returns the result to the client. With homomorphic encryption, the data and the function are encrypted, preventing the server from seeing them. Similarly, in a multi-party machine learning problem setting, the data and the model can be owned by different parties. And with homomorphic encryption, only the owners have access to their respective data or model. The server sees neither the data nor the model. So for our problem statement, there have been recent works that show that it is possible to compute entire CNNs on homomorphically encrypted data. However, these CNNs are still much shallower than the state-of-the-art CNNs. This is because the computation costs of homomorphic operations increase more than linearly with the multiplicative depth. Therefore, this approach is currently still not very scalable. Hence, our work focuses on reducing the latency of the homomorphic computation of individual convolutional layers by utilizing batching to pack data Okay, so it just seems like you, am I audible? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Uh, let me just uh, share the video again. Uh, probably just lost. Yeah. Patching is a capability 
of some HE schemes, which will be elaborated more morphically encrypted data. However, these CNNs are still much shallower than the state-of-the-art CNNs. This is because the computation costs of homomorphic operations increase more than linearly with the multiplicative depth. Therefore, this approach is currently still not very scalable. Hence, our work focuses on reducing the latency of the homomorphic computation of individual convolutional layers by utilizing batching to pack data belonging to the same batch instance. Batching is a capability of some HE schemes, which will be elaborated on further into the pre presentation. In our problem setting, the workload is a CNN-based classification of encrypted images. The computation is outsourced to a semi-honest third-party server, which computes individual convolutional layers, then transmits the intermediate results back to the data. When encrypted, it becomes a pair of polynomials. Okay, uh, sorry about the interruption. I'll just go back and try playing the it's video. It's a monic irreducible polynomial of degree n, typically chosen to be x to the power of n plus 1, where n is the power of 2. R is a polynomial ring, which can be roughly thought of as a set of polynomials with degree at most n minus 1 and with integer coefficients. This is the data flow for the CKKS scheme. We start off with a message, which is typically a number. The number is then encoded into message plain text, which is a polynomial. When encrypted, it becomes a pair of polynomials. After homomorphic computation is performed, this process is reversed to obtain the result. For the CKKS scheme, the encoding process maps a vector of length n over 2 to a polynomial in R. We call each vector space to store data a slot. These are the main operations for the CKKS scheme. Addition is just simply coefficient-wise additions. Multiplication involves multiplying two pairs of polynomials, which results in a set of three polynomials. Relinearization is used to convert this result back to the form of a pair of polynomials. The rescaling process in the CKKS scheme allows us to switch away part of the ciphertext modulus that we no longer need mid computation, thereby decreasing the cost of computation of subsequent homomorphic operations. Rotation implements a circular shift of the vector elements. The CKKS scheme also has a capability called batching. An operation between two plain texts is equivalent to the same operation between the two encoded vectors, 
element wise. This allows operations to be performed in a single instruction, multiple data manner, increasing parallelism. So for the convolutional layer, a batched convolutional layer can be decomposed into multiple single channel convolutions. The number of single channel convolutions is the batch size times the number of input channels times the number of output channels. Next, for a single channel convolution, the number of multiplications required is the kernel size times the width of the output feature map times the height of the output feature map. This then gives rise to a packing problem. Given a convolution-based workload, find a grouping of the required multiplications on a ciphertext that minimizes the latency of the convolution computation. We call a grouping a packing configuration. Next is our methodology. I'll present our methodology using a toy example in one dimension. We have an input feature map M of length five, a filter K of length three and strike two. The output feature map R is of length two. We also assume that the number of slots is eight. The first way to compute a convolution is the direct convolution where the input feature map values are multiplied by each filter value in parallel. The input feature map is rotated before being multiplied such that the partial results align at the same index. In our toy example, K1, K2, and K3 are encoded into separate ciphertexts, and the input feature map ciphertext is rotated before it is multiplied with the different filter values. In the previous implementation, the filter ciphertext is quite sparse. So what we can do is we densify the ciphertext to increase parallel multiplications. We call this interleaved convolution. In the toy example, we can encode K1 and K2 within the same ciphertext. The result is then summed with a rotated version of itself. This is called a rotate and sum procedure. As we can see, R1 is an accumulation of the partial results in indices one and two, and R2 is an accumulation of the partial results in indices three and four. What we see is that the number of homomorphic multiplications is reduced from three to two compared to direct convolution. However, interleaved convolution incurs overheads to combine the partial results. Next, we have the split convolution. Strider convolutions can be decomposed into S convolutions of strike one. The result is obtained by summing the partial results of these S convolutions. In our toy example, the split convolution is implemented in this manner, where we decompose the convolution into two separate convolutions of strike one. Each decomposed convolution is then computed using direct convolution. In the previous implementation, the input feature map is packed with data strike equal to S. We extend this further by implementing data strike in steps of S up to the input feature map length NI. In the edge case of when the data strike is equal to NI, the feature map is fully split across NI ciphertext, meaning no two values of the input feature map lie within the same ciphertext. For the channel dimension, we pack CI times CO 
single channel convolutions into different groups for parallel computation. The rotate and sum procedure is used to accumulate partial results and masking may be required to remove unwanted results. Different packing configurations will incur different overheads. For the batch dimension, we group multiple batch instances for parallelization. As there are no partial results that need to be summed across batch instances, there are no overheads incurred. To traverse the design space, we use a bottom-up approach, starting from the width and height dimensions, followed by the channel and batch dimensions, respectively. At each dimension, we comb through the different ways to group operations. These include deciding which sets of operations to group together, the different convolution methods, and the different data strikes for the split convolution. So for our results, we implement our methodology on a small example. Where the batch size is one, the input feature map is five by five with three channels. The filter size is three by three with strike two two. And the number of output channels is four. For the experiment, we chose N to be 8192 and the coefficients to be either 200 or 160 bits, depending on the multiplicative depth required. The security parameters are chosen such that the security level is at least 128 bit. The homomorphic operations were implemented using the Microsoft SEAL library. We use microbenchmarks to estimate the latency of the workload under different packing configurations. For each packing configuration, we count the number of different homomorphic operations required. Here are some timings for the operations, homomorphic operations when N is 8192 and the cipher text modulus is 200 bits. As you can see, Relinearization and rotation operations take the most time because they involve the complex and expensive key switching operation. Our cost model has a mean relative error of just under 5% when compared to the mean actual latency over 50 runs. This means that our cost model is quite accurate. Here, we have the table of the latency for different packing configurations. Our search identified a packing configuration with an average latency of 0.0982 seconds, which is slightly higher than what our cost model predicted. This is a 43x speedup compared to the baseline when batching is not utilized to parallelize the operations. So some extra discussion on the results obtained. The speed up is lower than the number of computations that can be parallelized, which is 4096. This is due to several reasons. First, the overheads required, such as the need to rotate the input feature maps and the rotate and sum procedure used to sum partial results. This is also because not all slots may be filled, which depends on the workload parameters and the packing configuration. Essentially, there is some kind of trade-off between reducing the number of homomorphic multiplications and the increase in overheads required to combine partial results. So for our conclusion, our work introduced a methodology that explores different packing configurations to reduce the latency of the computations of convolutional layers 
under homomorphic encryption. The methodology can be extended to other HE schemes that support batching, such as BGV and BFV. We chose the CKKS scheme because its approximate arithmetic nature is particularly suitable for machine learning applications. For our next steps, we plan to apply this work to realistic workloads. Thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at this email address. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the talk, Ben. Uh, I think we have uh, Ben with us in the audience. So let me just uh, try giving him the talking permissions. Um, in the meantime, do we have any questions for the speaker? Okay. So I have one. So, and also you mentioned, uh, thank you for the great talk, Ben. Uh, so one question, so uh, you tried uh, packing. Yeah. So you tried packing uh, uh, some 4096, uh, you know, inputs in a single uh, sort of ciphertext and then uh, computing on them. And you did mention some overheads. And even after packing those many, like the uh, operation improvement was 43x. So do you know which of those reasons that you mentioned is the main bottleneck? Uh, and is there any part you can see to sort of reduce those bottlenecks in your implementation? Um, so, um, so it's more like a design choice between, so I think it's you have to trade off between whether you want high throughput or low Um, um, you always have that overheat and I'm cur cur currently I'm not sure what how you can uh, reduce these overheads for the same amount of packing, if that makes sense. Because the overheads is a re due to the result of the choice of the packing. Yeah. So, so if I understand right, you're waiting for like a, a higher throughput or design choice. Um, okay, uh, any other questions from the audience? Please feel free yeah, to so, use chat. Uh, I think there's a question on um, the observation that the rotations are the most expensive of operations. Yeah, so because it involves the yeah. Sorry, I was just answering what the question in the chat, that's why. Yeah. So yeah, the homomorphic rotation is probably one of the most expensive operations. Yeah, I see, there's one in the chat right now. Okay. Yeah, so it involves the key switching process. So, uh, 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 the data value that belongs to within the same batch instance, because uh, you will require the rotations to uh, combine the results. So, yeah, so you get a trade-off of whether you want to parallelize more multiplications 
and pay use pay the expensive rotations. So it's like a trade off between um, number of multiplications and the number of rotations involved. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Uh, any more questions from the audience? Um, um, lastly, yeah, I think I just, questions. Yeah, I just had a small question to like before we close up the session. Um, so, uh, somewhere in the talk, there was a discussion about you know increasing the, you know the hops in the multiplication depth. Um, uh, so do you, I was wondering if you had any quantitative analysis, you know, of the bigger picture, for example, is there any trade off, you know, which exists basically say multiplication depth versus, uh, you know, the number of operations that we can implement or something. Right, yo, thanks for organizing this. Yeah. Ben? No, I think uh, we have some uh, connection issues with Ben. But anyways, let's uh, thank the uh, speaker uh, for this amazing talk. And uh, I think we have a break for 15 minutes and uh, Let's uh, come back at 4.45 uh, Eastern. Thank you. <laughs>